Welcome and thank you for tuning in to Neptune Knives. So in this video, we'll go over basically uh, titanium and some of its uh, properties or uh, traits. Uh, you know, some of the interesting things just to know a little bit more about that 6AL4V, whatever. The, the general titanium you see in all of knives. Uh, first of all, the titanium in knives is actually not some super high-end special titanium. It's the regular stuff, regular titanium. Uh, the Rockwell Hardness, uh, don't quote me on this because it, it's in one of my other videos, just Google it. It's low, it's like below 50, 47 or something like that. Um, different custom knife makers, uh, you know, for example, Strider would harden their titanium on the lock bar to help it not wear out. Um, these uh, Three Sisters Forge knives, carbidized, they add tungsten, which is basically tool steel, either M, M for molly bedem or T for tungsten, uh, same thing. They'll add some tool steel onto that. Uh, the area to help it be more solid and it's, it's just a lot of times why you see on, on uh, knives that uh, um, you know such as the Spyroco they have that little stainless steel plate right there to help it wear uh, uh, last longer that lock bar and um, you know same thing is with this 3 series forge and what it does is when it's because titanium is known to have a uh, four times uh, they say like the the bend or four times the, the toughness of steel uh, and, but because of that sort of a, a bend a bendable uh, well, I'm going to use the correct term for the rest of the video, uh, which is I'm going to explain flex. Because it has more flex than steel. You can, most knives, you can grip it hard and the lock bar will, will bend in. Uh, you know, Strider pushes their stop pins through the blade. And, you know, because it is flexing, it, you know, it, it'll push it in. And then when it, when it reaches the other side, it'll, it'll I have to say, I guess, expand again. Like, oh, right here. So, titanium, to be correct, cannot bend necessarily like a, for example, on these little sporks, titanium sporks, and I had this one and I thought to myself, man, this is a goofy design because when you stir and you lift something up, you know, so I thought to myself, what idiot came up with this? If the spork, if this side, if this thing was switched to where it was like this, you get what I'm saying? And then the spork came up that way and you were digging, it wouldn't do that. But, you know, hey, I can't contact REI, and in all their infinite wisdom, this is the best they can come up with. So I thought, well, let's just see if I can bend it. Because, you know, you can bend steel, you can bend things. So I started to bend it, and you can see it snapped. This is a titanium spork. And uh, so, you know, bear in mind that all these titanium lock bars, all these titanium products, they are molded into shape. And you just can't keep bending them until they break. Now, that might sound stupid. You know, someone's going to say, well, duh. But you know what? Nice to just know. And, and here's a little video explaining that. So they, they bend, they flex, they can flex, they're more flexible, they can, you know, uh, they can handle that constant, uh, I guess you would say, flexing of the steel. Um, now, so, bear in mind, that's one thing. Second thing interesting is uh, flaming. Uh, if you get yourself like a little butane lighter pen or a little butane lighter, you know, uh, these are expensive. Whoever tries to sell you this, don't believe them when they tell you that this is better than normal uh, Zippo lighters because, uh, yes, it's a hotter flame. I mean, you can do way more cool things with it, but it'll still evaporate. That's the key thing. Zippo lighters, they're not airtight. The fluid evaporates. If you think, oh, hey, I'm going to put this in my backpack, go camping, next thing you know, you have no fluid. You know, it's a pain in the butt. Uh, so anyway, but regardless, you could flame uh, a lock bar. You know, like this wasn't flamed, and you flame it, and there, that's that flame look. And if you keep going, you can see there's a little blue hue in there. Uh, so when striders have that flamed lock bar, you know, that's you can flame it. So if you wanted to, like, you know, if you had something titanium, you said, you know, I want to customize it and just flame a pattern onto it. You know, you can do that, uh, and it'll just harden the the the, the titanium. Um, now, now here's a normal spork. This is a much better one. Uh, now, interesting thing about uh, titanium is that it's it's very, uh, I say, it's not heat resistant. I mean, you cook with it, it'll cook, but it cools down very quickly. Like it cools to the touch very quickly. Um, also, titanium is corrosion resistant to everything. So you'll see a lot of diving knives and like, you know, those seal knives, something, they use titanium because it's also non-magnetic. So you see a titanium credit card knife. It's not going to demagnetize your, your credit cards. Uh, titanium, when you have titanium uh, next to blade steel, you know, it won't uh, galvanize. You know, galvanic corrosion, if you watch the video on, I think, rust and stuff and corrosion, rust and lube video uh, they have, you know, it, it, it doesn't have a charge to it. It doesn't, you know, it's non-magnetic. So it doesn't affect anything around it in terms of other metals and stuff. Uh, you know, of course, it's you know, machine washable. Uh, but uh, main thing are, are those couple of ideas right there. You know, it has uh, the next best steel that can flex would be um, 3V. Uh, so it goes like, I think, you know, pry bars, um, like... 
this little titanium pry bar here, uh, you know, it'll say uh, four times the, uh, the the toughness of uh, uh, so four times the, the flex is the toughness of uh, steel. You know, but so titanium has a lot of uses when it comes to edge retention. Titanium knives. That's why they add carbide. Like a uh, Warren Thomas, he'll add carbide uh, when you see um, sometimes of some titanium knives. They'll have that that grafted edge of a different steel or something onto it, kind of like a saw blade, a grafted carbide edge uh, that's you know, put onto it, so that this way it, it can have an edge retention because, like I said, titanium is soft. So, those are some interesting things about titanium. So, just to remind you, it's, it's flexy, it's, it flexes. It's flexible, but it, it's not workable. You can't necessarily just start shaping into things uh, and bending it uh, completely out of, out of shape. Um, it's very heat resistant, but it hardens when it's heated, and when it's heated, you get a pattern on it. Uh, it's non-magnetic and sterile, and uh, you know, it never corrodes or rusts. As for uh, titanium used in knife construction, the main thing is just steel. Can, when uh, if you had a frame lock and you had uh, the handle made of steel, and I'm pretty sure you guys have. No, you can tell when you've held uh, knives made of stainless steel, they're quite heavy. So, in most applications, you know, whether the knives are being for military use or, you know, uh, just normal everyday use, also normal people, uh, you know, you want lighter weight, so they give you titanium frame locks or reeve integral locks. And, uh, but there's this important thing to mention that is, uh, for example, remember since titanium isn't necessarily good for edge retention. That means that titanium can can kind of scrape off easy, can kind of lose edges easy. And uh, so when you have knives like for example this custom Anzo, you know where these uh, screws screw directly into the titanium. I mean you could think of that too then. That means that those the threading inside the titanium, those holes, uh, is not that strong. So when you always have to be careful when you have a knife that screws directly into the titanium handle pieces and then as for like um titanium and liners like a lot of people really um don't realize I, I guess i keep seeing the reviews and and it just when you have when you have a knife with titanium liners it's not there because of its strength or its or its toughness and definitely not its durability you know steel is going to be more durable um it's going to be more rigid more solid and titanium is going to wear off easier over here and it's going to be more flexible. The titanium is there because it's lightweight but also because when you have uh, like on Emerson's knives where there's the liners are inside and there's a G10 covering it, rust can get in between there and uh, that was an important aspect not only the weight but for um, Emerson you know when uh, he made those spec war knives for special warfare groups you know they preferred the titanium because it was less maintenance in the field. So that's the key thing of why because because titanium's a corrosion and rust free. So, uh, you know, when Strider does their stop pins made of titanium, now that's a really nice move. Um, you know, a lot of other companies don't do it, but it's nice just because since titanium does receive impacts, you know, it kind of bends and flexes, it's a good thing to have a titanium stop pin. Uh, but nevertheless, normal stainless steel stop pins work fine. Uh, it's just, like for example, uh, Hinder. I think, don't quote me on this, on some of his uh, space or standoffs, you can get uh, anodized titanium ones. And those are like a step up because, you know, when you have your, the screw go in and, and the female, you know, go through, you know, you don't have to worry about rust now inside of your spacer forming. You know, and also it would receive those impacts this direction better. So you can see titanium has some interesting uses um, overall. So I hope this video was, you know, helpful. Uh, it kind of goes in two parts. This is a little older video that I never uploaded, but I have received some questions about it, so I thought, you know, I'd answer them. And, uh, you know, and appreciate you guys watching. And if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and, and post them below. Okay.